So we're just going to start all this off by making a canvas and inside of the canvas I want you to put a image. This is going to be the background of the inventory. Hit 2D, scroll out, and this is the image we see. I'm going to put it on 16 by 9 because that's usually what most screen ratios are. Over here on source image, I'm just going to put in this inventory image that I made and I'm going to scale it up. To Also on the canvas, let's make it scale with screen size. What this is going to do is it's going to give us a reference resolution, which we're going to do 1920 by 1080. Um, and then whenever we scale our screen size, you know, all the components will scale with the inside of the canvas. So for the image, we're going to do a width of 1024 by 1024. And this is what the inventory is going to look like for me. And then we'll call this background image. Okay, so now that we have a background image, we're going to go inside and create another image. And we're going to call this slot. And now we're going to make the game space. So I want you to go to 3D object and then create a capsule. Reset its transform to get it to zero, 0, and then hit F to focus it. So this is the zero, 0 coordinates on the map. We're going to raise it up one unit on the Y axis, and then we're going to go to 3D object, create a plane, and then we're going to reset that transform. So now we have a player. the HUD and the ground. Just so that it's easier on the eyes, I'm going to create a material and then I'm going to make it the green color and I'm going to apply it to the, <laughs> for some reason it didn't make, and I'm going to apply it to the ground just so that you can differentiate between the player and the ground. I'm going to scale it up as well, 5x5, five five, and that's our game screen right there. Okay, so now let's actually do some programming. So what I want you to do is go into the player, and then add a component, and call it inventory. And then we're just going to open that up. Okay, so now that we're in Visual Studio, uh, you could go ahead and get rid of all this, and just leave the two brackets. So we're going to start off by making a public game object and then we're going to call it the inventory object. And this is just going to be the, the inventory canvas getting turned on and off. That's why we're referencing that. And we're also going to make a public slot array and just call it slots. Right now we don't have the component made so it'll give you an error but that's perfectly fine. Okay and now we're going to add void update. And if you don't know what update does, it, it's just a function that runs every single frame. And if you're running 60 frames per second, it'll run 60 times a second. So what we want to do is if the player hits tab, we want the inventory to open or close. And there's a really simple way to do this. We just go if input dot get key down and then parentheses key code dot tab basically what this is saying is if the player hits tab at any point we want to do inventory object dot set active not inventory object dot is or active in hierarchy and all this is is just a bull toggle so if it's active, it'll set it inactive, and then if it's inactive, it'll set it active. And we can actually go back into Unity, and you can see that we're getting an error that the slot could not be found. We're going to create a new script and call it slot, and that should fix the error. Now if we go to the player, the inventory object, we set as the background image, and then slots we'll worry about later. We just want to test out to see if this worked. 
So if I hit tab, you see the inventory opens and closes. Very simple. So now we're going to open up the slot and we could also get rid of this. Okay, this is going to be relatively simple. We're going to make a public boolean and this is going to be has item or just item and it's going to start out as false and this just represents if the slot has an item in it. We're also going to create a sprite and call it default sprite and text which is the amount of items in the slot. So amount text. Oh, I'm sorry. This should be text and you can see that we're getting an error. This is because we need to add the using unity engine dot UI at the top and that'll fix itself. Okay, now we're going to add another void update and have this run every frame. And we're just going to call a function called check for item. Uh, the reason there's red squiggly lines is because we haven't actually created the function yet. So let's do that right now. And there we go, the function is created, no more error. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if transform.childCount is greater than 1. then item i this is going to be a component so make sure that i is capital is equal to transform dot get child one dot get component item and right here make sure these are both capitals we're going to create another script called item um, just for simplicity, let's just create, uh, change. Let's just change the boolean to has item. Okay, so this right here, it's checking if it has a child or if there's an item. Then we're gonna execute that code and then else do some other code. Okay, so if it has an item, we're grabbing the item. We're setting has item equal to true. Okay, so now that we know it has an item, we're gonna get the component off this object. So get component image dot sprite and set it equal to the i dot item sprite. Um, okay, so I'm kind of tired at looking at these errors. So we're gonna go back into Unity real quick. This isn't gonna work. You wanna create a new script called item. Um, so we're gonna have a public sprite and call it item sprite, uh, a public int and call it the amount in stack. And this is just gonna be a number representing how much is in the stack. We're gonna set that equal to one by default. Another int, call it max stack size. And we're gonna set it equal to 1000 for now. You can change this whenever you want. And then public int item ID. This one's gonna be really important. This is just gonna be like what's allowing certain items to be stacked. Every item you have in the game, you wanna give a different item ID. All right, so go back to the slot. And what we're doing right here is we're accessing the item script. And then since there's a variable called item sprite, we're getting that from that item script and applying it to the image of the current slot that this component is on. And that's gonna be changing what the image looks like. All right, and leave it like that. Now in the else condition, we want to get component image dot sprite and make it equal to the default sprite, which is the variable up here. And then we want to do amount text dot text and set it equal to nothing. Okay, so currently both 
default sprite and amount text aren't referenced inside of Unity. So we're going to use one of Unity's functions called start. And whenever the object is loaded in, it'll call this function. And inside of start, we're going to be doing default sprite is equal to get component image. I don't know why I was typing sprite dot sprite. And then we want to do amount text is equal to transform dot get child zero dot get component text. And then now that we have this reference, we want to do amount text dot text is equal to blah. Okay, and that's all we needed to do. Now that we're back in Unity, let's re-enable the background image and go to the slot. What we're going to do is we're going to apply the slot component to it. And then right-clicking the slot, we're going to go to UI and we're going to add text component to it. You can select 2D and then hit F and it'll focus onto here. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to match the width and height of the original component and I'm going to change font size to or maybe around 40 um, align it from the right and the bottom right and then I'm going to give it a white color let's keep it at best fit maybe with max size to 25. Uh, you also want to select Raycast target and make sure that is on false. Okay, so what you're gonna notice is we have one slot in the middle of the entire inventory. So let's actually change that. Um, we'll start off by going to the background image and applying a grid layout group. We're gonna change cell size to 175. And then on the slots, get the slot text and drag it to the bottom right. And then we'll also change max size to maybe around 30. That looks about good. Okay, now that that's done, just duplicate a ton of slots and you can see that, uh, and you can see that they're lining up perfectly. I'm gonna have Maybe that amount of slots looks good, 19 or 20 slots, fine. And then you're gonna remove the grid, select all of the slots, and then drag them down to wherever you want them. Okay, so now on the player, we go to our inventory, and you can see that our slots are completely empty. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all these slots. We're gonna lock it up here, <laughs> and then we're gonna select all the slots and just drag it onto the slots and you can see they all automatically go in there. You can now unlock it and everything will be fine after that. Okay, so now that we have all the slots referenced, we can go back to Visual Studio. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to add the ability to add items to the inventory. So we're going to start off by making a function for that called public void add item inside of this we're gonna add two parameters call it the item we're trying to add so just item item so just item item to be added and then a second parameter which we're gonna use later called item starting item. Okay, so now that we're inside the function, we're just gonna do something really simple and just do for each slot i in slots. This is just gonna be a for loop going through each slot in slots. So we're gonna start out by doing if not i dot has item. This is the exact same thing as doing i dot has item is equal to false. These two are the same exact thing. 
then we're going to do item to be added dot transform dot parent is equal to i dot transform and then we're going to return so break out of the function this doesn't come to play right now but once we add more stuff it will okay so we created a function to add the item but we don't have any items to add so what we're going to do right now is we're going to actually create an item for once so now that we're back in the editor we're going to create a 3d object and it's going to be a sphere for now you can hit 2d to make it 3d and then f to focus we're going to reset the transform and then focus again and we're just going to put the item over here okay so on the item you want to add a rigid body and also the item component and this is what classifies an item inside of this system is just something with an item script on it um, you need to make sure all these values are filled out so item sprite I don't really have an item sprite so we'll just use a check mark to represent item ID 0 um, and then amount and stack will be maybe 512 and max stack size will be a thousand and we'll create two of these items and then for this item I'll do amount and stack one and now there's two items of ID zero inside of the field and I'm just gonna add a quick movement script onto my player if you guys want you could pause the video and copy it down but this isn't really part of the tutorial okay so I just got done with the move player script it's really simple if you want you could put it on the player um, it's not used for long term it's just for this example so currently there's no way for us to detect if the player actually has gone over the item so we're just going to add that to the inventory so we're going to add void on trigger enter and unity already fills out everything else i prefer the name cole as in collider um, and we're just going to do a simple check if cole dot get component item then we know it's an item we're just going to simply do add item Pull dot get component item now what this is going to do is it's just going to check if the other collider has an item script and if it does we're going to add it okay something i want to change real quick inside of the slot script is i want to change from a boolean to an item and then we're just going to call it slot item um, and then we're just going to do slots item is equal to the item and then else slots item is equal to null also get rid of this and slots item the item sprite now if slots item dot amount and stack is greater than one then we want to do amount text dot text is equal to slots item dot amount and stack dot to string okay we'll have an error inside of the inventory because right here we're doing a boolean and we'll just change it to if not i dot slots item okay so now we're in unity and if we go over the item you see this item only had one in the slot so it's not showing any text but this one had 512 so it's showing this text 